with your host, Adam Lubin. Hey, what's up guys, Adam here, and I know what you're thinking, it's been a long time since I made my last video, in fact, so long that Donald Trump has already been elected president. But all jokes aside, I've actually been fairly busy with my first semester of the second year of university, now the absolutely hurling work our direction so i'm trying to keep on top of that at the moment but today i'm going to be giving you guys an upgraded video actually to a video that i made a few months back on a field monitor this is going to be a newer version of that monitor it's going to have a larger display and it's also going to have a hdmi input so let's go ahead and take a look at that monitor So starting off with the design of the monitor, you're going to be getting a 9-inch LCD panel. It's not a touchscreen display, I'm not too concerned about that because touchscreen displays at this kind of price point tend not to be so great anyway. But you're going to be getting touch capacity buttons where you're able to control the power up button, you're able to control the menu as well as the volume controls. So moving on to the side of the panel, you're going to find a series of inputs. The first input is going to be an AV or headphone input, so you're able to monitor the audio if you're using the, the monitor as a field monitor or if you're going to be using it as something else such as a game monitor if you want to actually go ahead and game on this monitor which you can you can also use it to actually gain or listen to the output coming from the input source uh, within the monitor so below that we're going to be getting that all important hdmi input which can take inputs up to around about 1080i or 720p because the actual panel itself is actually 1200 by 800 so it's kind of sits around about the 720p progressive mark or 720p mark which is not so bad given the size of the monitor at 9 inches so you're not going to be losing out on much resolution or ppi considering the size of the monitor so you're going to be getting a 720p display technically which isn't too bad given the size on the opposite side is where you're going to find the 12 volt power input now the major disadvantage with this monitor is that it doesn't come with a built-in rechargeable battery so you can only power it uh, live whilst it's stationary unless you actually go ahead and get yourself a 12 volt rechargeable battery pack now actually they have one mounted to the back of the monitor itself and it's kind of an advantage in a way because some of these batteries that you can find that have a 12 volt input source actually have a much larger capacity than other, uh, other monitors that tend to take a DSLR battery or a camcorder battery because those type of batteries tend to max out at around about 2000 milliamp hours per battery whereas the one that I have mounted to this particular monitor right here is about 4000 milliamps so I'm going to be getting a lot more power from that single use or from that single charge of that battery. So the interface of the monitor itself is fairly straightforward to use. It pretty much works like any HD TV you've seen. As soon as you go ahead and turn it on, you can go ahead and select the input that you want to go ahead and use. And as soon as your camera is connected, you're able to go ahead and start using the camera immediately whilst viewing all of the camera credentials through the monitor. So one of the things that I immediately noticed when I started using the monitor was just how overexposed it was on the first use. So you do get features such as being able to go ahead and change the contrast, the brightness, the saturation, the color temperature. It's not really, really in-depth things like being able to change the RGB code and, and seeing visible histograms and things like this. Very straightforward stuff like you would see on an ordinary TV. It's not really up there with the rest of the professional field monitors but it's a fairly good start uh, if you want to go ahead and get, get yourself a first field monitor that you can actually use at a very inexpensive price point. So for someone that is probably tired of using the built-in LCD screen on the DSLR camera or you want to get more flexible angles without having to break your neck and bend your neck in all different directions so you can go ahead and see what you're looking at then having the field monitor is definitely going to be a huge advantage for you. And anyway guys, it's been Adam here. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. And I'll catch you guys in the next tech video. Bye for now.